Hello again YouTube. Um, this is just another update to my system. As you can see, I've totally revamped everything. I've taken away the uh, grid tie inverters and just uh, kind of tried to make things a, a lot more simplistic. Um, you know, in the spirit of what I originally designed my system to do, which was be a backup system. Um, what you see here is I went to Home Depot and I was looking for a professional looking enclosure for my uh, solar equipment, my components. And, you know, something to replace the, you know, the uh, wooden uh, cabinet that I built. Um, I am by no means a, you know, a woodworking individual and, you know, I just kind of pieced it together. And it served its purpose for a while. But I wanted to get something better and, you know, I, you know, after talking to the folks at Home Depot, you know, they came up with this idea of using a load center, a load center. Now, if you search on the net, then if you look for certain enclosures, they can get pretty expensive. But this load center, they, it was at Home Depot and they were, it was on clearance. They're trying to get rid of it. And, you know, at first glance, you're like, well, you know, how can I deal with that one? But, uh, but what happened was I took it, I brought it home. And I essentially, you know, gutted it. I gutted it and took out a circuit breaker panel and, uh, excuse my Cylon there, but I took out the circuit breakers uh, connection and the panels and so forth and I replaced it uh, with my components. Now, if you look, uh, you know, it's a little neater up top and there's my disconnects and so forth. Down here, it looks like, it looks a little busy. A little messy, but it's really not. Uh, it's just that these wires right here, these wires are part, they come in from my uh, solar panels and I didn't want to shorten the wires. Just in case I had to move them or for whatever reason, you know, I didn't want to have to buy more cables because they were too short. So I just simply just, you know, kind of bunched them up in here. Behind it, um, it's actually, you know, rather neat. It is. Um, but you know, just these, these little wires here, they, you know, they just bunched up and they're out of the way. So I'm not really, uh, worried about it, but anyway, you can actually go to Home Depot. You can see that the boxes, these disconnect switch boxes here, they fit rather well on the inside of, of these panels. So I'm sure, you know, you can kind of, you know, uh, find a load center that would, uh, fit your needs and it may work out for you pretty well. Um, but you can look at my equipment. I wanted to go back to simplicity here. Just make it really easy, not only for myself, but for others that may want to view, uh, you know, the video and, and kind of learn about what they need to get and, you know, and, and to deal with solar. You know, just for those folks that may have, nev may have never seen any of my videos or haven't followed it. Essentially, we're talking, I've got two charge controllers. These are MPPT charge controllers, maximum power point tracking charge controllers from Morningstar. Um, they're Sunsaver MP MPPTs. Each one is, uh, is a maximum of uh, 15 amps. Um, and uh, let's see, they also take a maximum of 70 volts, either, you know, either one. And the reason I have these two uh, charge controllers is because in, initially when I first started out, uh, you know, I did a bad thing and I got different panels. <laughs> I say bad thing because, you know, if you're going, if you're going, to, if you're in in this for the long haul, it's best to get all of the same type of panels. But you know, live and learn. But being that I have 24 volt panels and 12 volt panels, I couldn't put them both on the same controller. Okay, so I had to get separate controllers. If I had all of the same types of panels, I could have got a nice big uh, MPPT, uh, MPPT controller and it would have, you know, uh, satisfied my requirement. But that's fine. They, they're working great together in tandem. They've been, it's, all, it's going on about two years. In a few months, it'll be two years. Um, and, you know, from the, discs, uh, the uh, charge controllers, I just have two disconnect switches. This charge controller will disconnect the panels uh, from the charge controller and the charge controller from the battery all in one swoop. Okay, this particular, uh, this is a switch. It's not a circuit breaker. It's a switch. It's a um, single pole double throw. Single pole double throw. That means there is uh, two separate circuits. And that's how I can actually shut off the panels from the charge controller and the charge controller from the battery. 
um, all in one thing. And both of these are configured in, uh, in like manner. This one will shut off the panels to the charge controller on this controller here and from the charge controller to the battery. So they're side by side, uh, controllers one and two, and they, they work great. Again, these are not circuit breakers, they're just disconnect switches. Okay, I have other uh, overcurrent protection in the system. Now, this right here is, is in fact a circuit breaker. It is a 150 amp circuit breaker. I used to have a inline fuse. Uh, but I decided to go with a circuit breaker just because, you know, just in case something tripped and I can actually instruct someone to come in and just simply flip the switch. If it trips, then this will go up to the top here to the off position and all they would have to do is just reset it by flipping it down. So this is a circuit breaker between my inverter and the battery. So it doubles as a, it's a circuit breaker and it also doubles as a, as a disconnect switch. Now, I have two fuses right here, these two, and that's overcurrent protection uh, from the controller to the battery. They're just simple inline fuses there. They're just they're 30 amp inline fuses, and they work fine. Um, this right here is another uh, inline fuse. It's just a 3 amp fuse, and that's between um, my uh, the battery and my uh, battery monitor here, this trimetric. Uh, the trimetric is very sensitive. I've actually fried the the board on this, and I had to get it. I had to send it back to get it replaced or fixed, uh, because I accidentally, when I was taking it apart, you know, there was a, a small surge that of current that went to it and fried the board. So that's why this is incredibly important to have you know some type of fuse in between it if you do indeed have a trimetric. Okay, and so that's essentially it. I mean, it's this thing. It's it was you know inexpensive. It, it wasn't. It was on clearance, but it's a lot. It was a lot cheaper than some of the enclosures, the quote unquote professional enclosures that I saw on the net, and uh, that I was considering. Um, and you know, if you're handy with a screwdriver, <laughs> okay, and a, a screwdriver and a drill. Yeah, you can get one of these, gut it, and mount it, and it'll be just fine. It's just fine. If it's if a load center is good enough for a new house, it's it's basically it's good enough for my solar equipment. Now, also as you can see, I've updated my drawing uh, to reflect my you know my latest you know revamping of the system, and um, I'll try to you know include a link for those that want to see it, how it's hooked up, and everything. And again, I just wanted to get back to simplicity, just make it really, really simple. And, um, you know, you see how everything's set up. I mean, it's, you know, nothing special. We're just now there is I there is no grid tie functionality at all. This is a backup system. Now, at this point, I go into what is what I call set and forget mode. OK, these things basically once you have them in place, they generally they they run themselves. I don't I won't have to come in and check it every day or anything like that. It's again, it's going on two years now. I am I'm pretty satisfied. I have a this MagnaSign inverter. It has an automatic transfer switch in it. Um, you know, during a power outage, you know, recently we had one and I didn't even know we had a power outage <laughs> until, you know, I walked into the house and I saw some blinking, uh, some blinking clock lights on, a, on the stove. Um, but it works great. And for you folks, again, that are thinking about solar backups, you know, it works, you know, and it's worth really worthwhile. It was a worthwhile project. Um, but I think right now I have it in a place where I wanted it to be. But anyway, um, okay, YouTube, for you folks that are looking for enclosures uh, or a, a you know, way to, I, I don't want to say beautify your project, but to make it a little more uh, neat looking, you know, take a look at these load centers at, at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. They may help you out. Okay, have a good one, YouTube.